Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. And tonight we're going to link some amazing topics which are pertinent for our channel and for your survival as we descend into the grand solar minimum. Did you know that trillions upon trillions of viruses fall from the sky each day? Well, there is a causal link, and we will discuss it now. Sunspot cycle minima and pandemics. The case for vigilance. This paper came out June 23rd, 2017 in the Journal of Astrobiology and Outreach. And I'll read you the abstract. Direct records of sunspots and the solar cycle have been maintained in astronomical observatories since 1610 AD, while indirect records derived from carbon-14 analysis of ice cores goes back to 900 AD. Minima in the sunspot cycle present conditions conducive to the entry or activation of new pathogens and also for the mutation of already circulating bacteria and viruses. Three grand minima of solar activity on record, the sporer minimum, 1450 to 1550 AD, the Maunder minimum, 1650 to 1700 AD, and the Dalton minimum, 1800 to 1830, have been marked by a preponderance of pandemics, smallpox, English sweats, plague, cholera, the sunspot numbers recorded for the present period, which you're living, include the deepest sunspot minimum, cycle 23 and 24, followed by an even deeper minimum that we are currently in, cycle 24 to 25. And this is since records began. And the trend in declining numbers is evident. And you can see from this graphic, the solar minimum forecast is down all the way towards about 2075 before it comes back up. And the same period that we're living here, the modern eddy minimum, has seen the resurgence of several pandemics, including SARS, MERS, Zika, Ebola, influenza, and now the plague. Now, the possibility of linking sunspots with pandemics was first suggested in 1977 by Hope Simpson, who pointed out that many pandemics of influenza in history occurred close to times of sunspot maxima. There they are. So here we see the Sporer, the Maunder, the Dalton, and the Centennial Minimum all showing up, and now the modern minimum. Hoyle and Wickrangshi re-examined this proposal using a more extended data set and concluded that although the coincidences were not precise, the two sets of data, influenza and sunspots, were in fact phase-locked, such that a causal link was likely. This work was recently extended by Q, who found a more generalized result, namely that both certain and possible pandemics fall within plus or minus two years of sunspot extrema. That means maxima or minima. Now, maxima in the sunspot cycle, like the modern maxima, which we just lived, are characterized by high daily sunspot numbers, frequent solar flares, coronal discharges, X-ray emissions, high fluxes, and X-rays reach the Earth's upper atmosphere but are almost totally absorbed by the lower atmosphere because the magnetosphere is strong. A more important property of a sunspot maximum is that the interplanetary magnetic field near the Earth remains very high being generated and maintained by the flow of electrons from the sun. And as such, the Earth would be effectively shielded from the ingress of charged dust grains, as well as galactic cosmic ray protons, which are the ones we're worried about because they cause mutations, they cause mass extinctions, they cause evolution, and they cause pandemics. And therefore, it is to sunspot minima 
that we must turn to seek a possible explanation of the onset of these pandemics. Sunspot minima are characterized by a weakening of the interplanetary magnetic field. And they allow more cosmic rays to come in. And allowing for the entry of these galactic cosmic rays or GCRs, as well as electrically charged bacteria and viruses into the Earth. Now, when these GCRs collide with our atmosphere during solar minimas, they produce a cascade of secondary particles, including neutrons and muons, that continue to penetrate the atmosphere. Now, this cascade continues until the particle energy becomes too low and the GCRs are effectively stopped. And this happens at around 16 to 20 kilometers. Significant neutron fluxes do, however, reach ground level and have the potential of causing mutations in both viruses and other biological entities, like people. More significantly, however, in the view of this paper, during solar minimums, new viruses, bacteria, and other microscopic biological entities can penetrate the interplanetary magnetic field barrier and reach the stratosphere. Descent of such particles to ground level by means of gravitational settling might take months or years, depending on the size, which is why the pandemics might reach peak during the next maxima. Also of interest to note that the first descent by meteorological events is also of interest to note, I'm sorry, that the first descent of viral sized particles deposited in the stratosphere will occur at places where the stratosphere is thinned. And by this argument, populated areas of China lying eastward of the Himalaya mountain range hmm, would present the best candidate for the next pandemic. It is therefore not surprising to find that the first strikes of a new or renewed viral disease are often recorded in China. We should, however, stress that not every minima in the sunspot cycle would be associated with a new epidemic or a new pathogen. Additionally, conditions needed to be fulfilled, most importantly pathogen, additional conditions that Earth has recently encountered a stream of cometary debris containing disease-causing dust. Now, that would be crazy, but it also could be science fiction. Now, as these particle cascades come down, they may actually ionize the trillions upon trillions of viruses that are up there. But the paper also suggests that viruses may also be entering from space. During times of magnetic reversal or solar minimum, when the magnetosphere is weak, these viruses can actually come through the ionosphere, through the stratosphere, down through the atmosphere and onto the surface, which is mind-boggling. I'm going to leave you the entire paper for your perusal. It's only three pages, so do not discount the fact that you can understand this entire paper, every single word. And I just want to have a quick discussion about the Black Death and its occurrence, and not only that, the Justinian plague. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, okay? The timeline, the Black Death. And we start to compare the Justinian plague here happened right at around 550 A.D., that's when it hit. And if we come over here and locate 550 AD, it is not here. So we need a different source. And where are we going to get that source? Right here. Now this brings us back 5,000 years in history and has all the minimums, the collapse of society, everything we've talked about on this channel. And if we come back to here at 550 AD, you can see it's called the Greek minimum. The Justinian plagues collapsed the Greek Empire. Prior to that, the last plague, which is not documented, we won't discuss, happened during the Hermeric minimum. 
and the 18th dynasty collapse of Egypt, probably also plagues involved. So right here we can see at the solar minimum, the grand solar minimum, the Greek grand solar minimum at 550 AD, plagues, the Justinian plague, and the collapse of society. Picking it up. Now, we can come over here to 1325 AD and the Black Death, which killed 25 to 40% of Europeans. And that's the Machu Picchu collapse, the collapse of Peru, the collapse of South America, right after the medieval maxima. And, and the collapse of the Mayan civilization, Grand Minima. It's very linked. And then from just before 1500 to 1700, we killed off all of the natives, which is this entire Minima period. By the time we reached 1750, we had killed a majority of the native population in North and South America in any of that Columbus effect with the smallpox blankets and the deliberate murder of tens of millions. It's disgusting. But we want you to be prepared for the future, not scared. Now couple this with the fact that volcanoes are going to be erupting. Here are volcanic events in purple pointing down from the top of the screen, all correlating to the same times. 540, 1300, 1500, and then Dalton times. So we have pandemics, we have weakened magnetosphere, we have cascading cosmic rays causing mutations, and exploding pandemics every time. And now we're living on the next time, the next big time. This could be as big as the spore, the maunder minimum. Probably as big. Now from past records, the correlation of the sunspot cycle and pandemics is clear that the onset of a deep minima is a sig signal of action, which is why we need you to act. We have stated elsewhere that the sunspot number could be... Anyway. By monitoring genetic variations, equally important are in our view, is to monitor the stratosphere for the presence of viral entities that may pose a pandemic threat. And there has been studies on this. I'll leave you links to that. This is actually coming from the New York Times. The study in the High Sierra Nevada Mountains of Spain, an international team of researchers set out four buckets to gather a shower of viruses falling from the sky. And they determined that trillions upon trillions are there. And we need to monitor these to see which is the next big boom. But the way you can hedge your bet is to get your immune system in top shape. That means stop eating processed food. Grow your own food. Even organic food that you buy in the store is covered with poison and pesticide. Trust me. If you don't know where your food is coming from, you don't know what's in your food. Period. And the time we're going into when Flu pandemics clearly occur on grand minimas here and here and again and then again starting now. We need to be vigilant. We have proven through modern science that we are in a galactic cosmic ray maxima, which means that these cascading effects can take these viruses down to the surface. Not only that, they can mutate your genes. And we're looking at a solar minimum forecast if we even look at the CMIP6 that extends way past 2100. And we'll get to that. The Black Death, the Justinian Plague occurred during a grand solar minima. The Black Death during a grand solar minima. Even the Columbian Exchange deaths were all grand solar minima related. Here's the big picture. Rise and fall of empires is cyclic. Take a look at this picture. Take a look at 
the proxy data below. Here's the carbon-14 information. Here is the glacial information. Here's the solar information. They all correlate. Severe glaciation at 500 AD resulted in a plague. Severe glaciation <laughs> at 700 BC, I'm sorry, it was BC, resulted in the fall of an empire. Severe glaciation at 700 AD collapsed the Mayan civilization. A drop in carbon-14, a drop in carbon-14, a drop in carbon-14. A raisin pandemic. Carbon-14 drops, pandemics increase, and glaciers grow. These are all correlations proven again and again and again. Now, I, if you say correlation is not causation, I believe you. But when we have a multiplicity of events occurring from the same sources, the sun's minima responds with volcanic activity and plagues, and we can correlate these again and again and again and again, and there's no place that they don't correlate, then we have a problem. That means our theory is correct, and we need to refine it. And it's getting better. It's not getting worse like global warming. Our theory is becoming clear. You're fluxed. Pandemic is coming. Volcanoes are coming. And the reduction of population is imminent. Now, the new CMIP data suggests that it is going to be going down for a hundred years before it ever recovers. And is my geologic background that suggests that we're at the sea level fall surface, which means it will never recover for tens of thousands of years. The pandemic, however, is imminent. Get your immune system ready. The last one in 1918 was caused by the H1N1, which is back. The bird flu. Although there is not universal consensus regarding where the virus originated, it spread worldwide 1918-19 right at the end of the centennial minimum. It had already fallen to the surface. It just needed to be picked up by the humans. They're coming from space. I hope you got something out of the video. Sunspot cycle minima and pandemics. I hope I gave a case for vigilance. Have any questions, leave them in the description box down below where the comment section is. Do your own research. There is a clear connection between pandemics and grand solar minimus. Preparewiththeranch.com Preparewiththeranch.com Stop eating genetically modified foods. Get on a completely organic diet. Buy a green juice supplement. Use Rick Simpson oil. Get your immune system in homeostasis. Eat the Ormus. A certain few people will make it through here regardless. Strong. Resistant to viruses. Will you be part of that click? We need you. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. Cosmic rays are raining down on you right now. And that's a boom.